time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, And today we're gonna be unboxing and reviewing the HD 598 Special Edition headphones from Sennheiser. Now I picked these up from amazon.com during Black Friday and I got them for a song. In other words, dirt cheap. I paid about $100 for these, which for anything Sennheiser is pretty amazing, let alone a five series pair of headphones. So I had to get them. I'm sure the price has gone up a little bit since then. And I will have a link in the video description to the current product and the current pricing if you guys are interested in getting a pair after this review. And by using those links in my video descriptions, often you get discounts and you also help out the channel, which is fantastic. All right, guys, well, let's crack open the box and see what's going on. The box is actually really nice and they advertise right on the front here that it's a two year warranty, which is actually really cool because most of the headphones I get have 90 day or like a one year warranty. So having a two year warranty means that Sennheiser actually puts a lot of faith in their products. And I have to be honest, I've never experienced a single failure with a Sennheiser product. Now, whatever language you happen to speak, there's probably something on the back of this box for everybody. Do you even advance duo flow diaphragm technology, bro? Do you? Now I noticed something kind of interesting on this box I haven't seen before. Instead of having a piece of tape like they usually do where you have to sit there and you know get all bat knifey on it, I know guys, I'll, I'll work bat knife in somehow. It just has this little tape ribbon here that's actually threaded through a hole. So you can actually remove it with your fingers and you don't need a knife. I actually think that's pretty cool. I wish more products did that. All right, other than that, it's pretty normal. Looks like you just got some tabs here. Uh, looking at the top of the box, it looks like we actually have a cable here for the headphones and that is a good sign. Notice it's not attached to the headphones. That means this has a replaceable cable. For me, that is one of the most important things with headphones because I'm constantly running over the cables, yanking the cables, getting up and walking away thinking they're wireless. It's good to have a replaceable cable. All right, let's slide this drawer out here. I actually really like this packaging. All right, so at first glance at the packaging, it looks like you have an adapter and this is actually gonna come in handy. Uh, and I'll show you guys why later, but that is a good sign. Notice that it has the large type jack right there. That means that this is actually a professional pair of headphones. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that or imply that, but if you look, it has the large style connector, um, which is generally a good sign when you're getting headphones. It means that there are higher powered headphones and usually higher power, if you have a good amplifier, translates to better sound. Usually, not always. So just simmer down your audio file types. Just calm down, hear me out. Now this is cool, the bottom of the packaging just drops open. I do like that, and the top and the headphones come right out. Uh, they are actually pretty lightweight, I'm surprised. Uh, and I do notice that it does have the detachable cable. Now I noticed it has a cable already on it. So they literally send you a spare cable. I'm guessing this is a shorter cable. It looks like it is, this is a much longer cable that's on it. So you get two cables with this thing, that is awesome and it's a detachable cable. I haven't even listened to these yet and I'm already pretty impressed. I mean, for a pair of headphones that's uh, you know around $100, now granted, I got them on some crazy sale. They're probably a bit more than that now. But still, I think that's really impressive that it comes with two cables, the adapter, it is a replaceable cable, and the packaging's quite nice. So Sennheiser, honestly, really never lets me down. Go Sennheiser. Seriously though, guys, where's my paycheck? I've, I've been waiting forever. I'm just kidding guys, Sennheiser does send me samples to review every once in a while, but I actually bought these uh, with my own money because like I said, head, headphone whore. Whore. All right, done with this. Now both the cans on this headphone pivot back and forth. It looks like they have actually a lot of adjustability. So if you have a monstrous head, these should fit you no problem. The mechanism does ratchet. Um, but it ratchets very, very gently. Usually I find with headphones, you have to reef on them to adjust them. So I do like the adjustment on those. And even though they look like they're a closed ear design, they actually seem like they're open. When I put them on, I can actually still hear everything going on in the room just fine. It, it, it deadens the sound down just a little bit, but not like a closed ear cup, which means that I'm gonna expect these to have a little less bass and a little bit more sound presence, sound stage, if you will. Now, before we try out these headphones, I wanna talk about another thing that is really, really important if you're gonna get into high-end headphones, and that is the audio source. Your headphones are only as good as the signal that you're getting to them. Now, let me show you the headphone amp that I use. So guys, this right here is my headphone amplifier. Actually, I already have an adapter in it, but this is a objective 
to amplifier and DAC combo from Mayflower Electronics. I do have a link in the video description and I wanna to explain to you guys that I got sucked in by the whole you have to spend a billion dollars on an amplifier bullshit when I started this whole whole adventure. So I had a Wu Audio WA7 Fireflies amp, which was about a thousand dollar tube amplifier, had a giant power brick, all metal glass, weighed a million pounds. And I actually gave that amp away to my friend Greg. Uh, you guys know him as Gax10 on the internet because I honestly like the sound of this one better. It's a cleaner sound. And honestly, there is no distortion. You can crank this thing to 100% with the gain maxed out plug-in headphones and you do not hear anything. Not a hiss, not anything, not a pop. This is a clean audio source. Now, if you look on the back here, I have it plugged in with a USB to my computer, so it is the sound card also. When you plug this in, it's gonna show up as an O2 sound card on the computer. And you also see it has two RCA outs that I run over here to my mixer board. Uh, so that I can also, if I want, plug my headphones in and use the amp and the mixer board. But I noticed even with a Max, a Mackie mixer board here, the sound coming out of here is much cleaner and I can push a lot more power using the amplifier built into this. Another really cool thing is even if you turn it off, the sound card or DAC, what they call it, digital to analog converter, still works. So I still get passed through sound from the computer into this and then it goes out to all of my speakers that I have on my desk here. Now, if you guys are interested in getting one of these amplifiers, I do have a link down in the video description that will actually give you a little bit of a discount. And I, I promise you're gonna love it. These little amps are amazing. Another thing that's kind of cool is the adapter that plugs in isn't a DC adapter. It's not, it's actually AC, which confused me a lot. So make sure you don't plug the wrong adapter into this thing because it does use AC current. And it's another one of the little secrets as to why the sound quality is so clean on something that's just so small and so simple. All right, since we're plugging this into my headphone amplifier directly, I'm gonna go ahead and use the cable that was on it that has the large style connector. All right, plugging her in to the out right here. You'll also notice there's an input on this amplifier right here. So if you wanna plug in another audio source like your iPhone out and then use the amplifier in this, uh, because you'll notice that using headphones like this with iPhones and stuff like that, you're not gonna get a massive amount of volume. So if you like loud, just run a little pass-through cable from your iPhone into the amplifier and then just use this sucker. Now, I would say start with the gain button off. This little gain button gives it a power boost and you really don't want that power boost um, with some headphones because it'll actually push too much power to them and you could damage them. So start with the gain off and start with the volume low because this thing is pretty powerful and if you hook up cheap headphones to it, they're just gonna just blow your eardrums out. All right, so when I'm testing any of my headphones, I actually like to play uh, FLAC or lossless sound. There's a lot of different audio formats, but I have a bunch of music in FLAC format at about 320 kilobits per second in very low compression. The files are absolutely enormous. You might uh, be 50 or 60 megabytes for a single song, but you will notice that when you listen on a good amplifier and a good pair of headphones, you get a lot more clarity from the uncompressed audio. Some people swear that they can't tell the difference and you can't if you have shitty audio source and shitty headphones. But if you have really good headphones and all you're listening to is like 128 kilobit encoded MP3s, you're seriously robbing yourself of the experience. Is this the real life? Unfortunately, due to copyright reasons, I can't listen to the music live, but it wouldn't do you any good anyways, because what you'd be hearing is the music playing through your speakers, and you wouldn't be hearing it coming from the headphones. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and shut the camera down for a little while. I'm going to listen to a whole array of music, also play one of my games, and then I'll come back and give you guys the final verdict on these cans. Okay guys, I listened to about 10 lossless songs and played around with varying amp settings uh, and equalizer settings to kind of get a feel for these headphones. Uh, one thing I did notice immediately though is because they are an open back headphone and they are, they are massively open back, don't let the look fool you. Uh, this is sitting at about, I don't wanna say max volume, but pretty high, but listen. I'm sure you guys can hear that no problem. I mean, you could literally set these on your desk and they would substitute for speakers. Now that's not a bad thing. That's to be expected with the open back headphones, but just know when you buy these, uh, these aren't gonna be good for listening to music like on a bus or listening to music or watching movies on an airplane because basically everybody in the seats behind you and the seats ahead of you are gonna hear what's going on. You might as well just play the sound through the speakers 
on your laptop. Now, another thing that I noticed immediately is these are very, very light on power. An iPhone will have no problem driving these at high volume. I actually plugged these into my Objective 2 amplifier, and you can see here, I have it literally on the second notch right here. And the gain button, it hasn't even been applied yet. So these are actually taking a very, very minimal amount of power. So these, these aren't super power hungry cans, but it also means that they're not bass heavy cans. Now the bass is definitely present, but I found for my tastes, I had to EQ in a little bit of bass and the bass does distort if you turn up the volume too much. You have to actually back off the volume just a little bit if you increase the bass, which is normal for most headphones uh, to, to get a decent amount of bass. But if you're a person that like, enjoys massive amounts of bass, like basically like the Beats by Dre where all it is is bass and nothing else matters. These are not the cans for you. They are incredibly comfortable though. I will tell you that right now, that out of all the headphones that I've worn, I would say that these are probably one of the more comfortable pairs that I wear. They're not heavy on your head. They grip your head really well. So when you're shaking your head back and forth like this or looking around at your massive 50 inch screens where you're playing Battlefront, uh, they're not gonna pop off your head like some of the heavier cans do. And they've got a good amount of clamping force in from the side by the way that it distributes it around your ears it's not going to create any like points of pressure that give you a headache or anything like that and i've actually worn some other headphones like the audio technicas that i've worn that actually created pressure points uh the most comfortable headphones i've ever worn are the akg uh headphones a couple of pairs that i have like the seven series um but as far as sound quality these actually had the better sound quality of the akgs that i used now the mids on these absolutely sound amazing and it, the treble isn't overdone. I've actually listened to some Sennheiser cans before where you have to actually EQ out a lot of the treble because it's ear piercingly high treble, especially in their high end cans like the HD 800s, um, which is fantastic when you're listening to classical music and stuff like that. But it can actually start to annoy you when you're playing video games and stuff like that where there are a lot of high pitched noises, especially in like first person shooters. But I do have to say again, I am a little bit surprised at how little power these handled. When I went up past the third notch uh, on the amp, there was noticeable distortion in all of the lossless sources that I listened to. And that's a level where some of my other cans I'd plug in, the, they'd be at about three quarter volume. So these are incredibly efficient headphones. But again, that's gonna come at a little bit of a cost, like I said, with the bass and the overall sound quality. But if your primary audio source is gonna be like an iPad or an iPhone, which a lot of people don't realize, the iPad and iPhone actually have wonderful DACs in them. And the amplifiers in them are actually quite good for their size. I would say best in class. Um, as far as mobile electronics go, which is a little bit mind blowing to some, but it's absolutely true. They will drive these to insane volume levels. So it's got you covered on that front. But if you're looking for a heavier, higher power handling cans, something with a lot more bass, you're probably gonna wanna look at a little bit of a higher end Sennheiser can. But overall for the price, these sound absolutely fantastic. And the sound stage on it is wonderful. It's a very, very broad and wide sound stage. It doesn't sound like all the sounds are just grouped together and smashed together and are emanating right from your ear. It feels more like you're listening to a sound system coming from speakers in the room. And that's that's actually a big deal with headphones. And it has to do with the way that they position the driver in the headphone and the way the enclosure works inside. And I have to say that open backs generally have that wider, nicer sound stage. But like I said, it does uh, hit you a little bit at the base. So if you listen to stuff like dubstep primarily or rap and R&B, these are probably not gonna be the headphones that you want. But if you listen to country music, classical music, and things of that nature, these actually sound incredibly good for the money. All right guys, it's time to try a little Star Wars Battlefront and see how these work for gaming. Here we go. If you guys haven't played Star Wars Battlefront, this game is gorgeous. The graphics are amazing. These sound amazing. Very wide, spread out sound. That's what I like with gaming headphones. I don't like them to sound like earbuds. Oh, didn't see that guy up there. For those of you that are wondering, these are uh, Samsung JU7000 series screens. They're 4K and they're connected via HDMI. Got him. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. A lot of people think it's really stupid that I use large screens, but I absolutely love it. I wouldn't change it for anything. I mean, just to give you some size reference, that's a 34 inch uh, LG ultra wide screen. And those are the 50 inch 4K. So think of it like having four uh, 1080p monitors all grouped together. The, the pixels are absolutely tiny. Text is super easy to read when it's small. Try it before you knock it. Now I have to say is gaming headphones, these actually sound amazing. Uh, having that broad stereo effect uh, really, really helped me with positional audio 
while playing the game. The sounds are fantastic in the game. The, the mids and the trebles were very, very sharp. All the all of the different noises going on and everything were very, very separate. They weren't mushed together and I didn't feel like there was any distortion even at the higher volumes. So that's fantastic. I would recommend though, if you do something like this as a gaming setup, uh, you might want to add a mod mic to it. And I'll put a link in the video description. I'll also be reviewing the mod mic later on, but uh, there's surprisingly high quality mics that can attach onto any headphones. And it's kind of the way that I want to get all my headphones set up for gaming, because obviously most of the high-end cans do not come with an integrated microphone. With the exception of a few, I did review the Sennheiser Game Zeros, which had an amazing sound to them and had an integrated microphone, but they're also pretty expensive. All right, guys, well, my final verdict on the HD 598 Special Editions is that they're absolutely fantastic if you listen to music like country and classical and stuff that has a lot of mid and treble to it. And the sound stage is beautiful. They don't need a lot of power to drive, so they're perfect if you're doing stuff on your iPad and on your iPhone and watching movies and things like that. The only thing I wouldn't recommend them for is bass heavy apps applications. If you listen to a lot of R&B and a lot of dubstep and things like that, I don't think you're going to necessarily be happy with these. And even with EQing in extra bass, it really didn't make as much of a difference as I would have hoped to achieve. So it just depends on what type of user you are. If you're a gamer though, these were fantastic for hearing. I mean, you could hear a squirrel fart through these things in the game, which is very, very nice. They pick up on those very, very subtle sounds. So I was very, very impressed there. Uh, but one thing I want to remind all of you guys is definitely get a good digital to analog converter or IE sound card, uh, preferably external is what I prefer, just so you don't have all the EMI of what's going on in the case. And you want to make sure you have a good amplifier because having a clean amplifier and a very, very clean and decent DAC is going to make all the difference in the world with your headphones. I've taken my HD 800s, which are my most expensive Sennheisers and hooked them up to an iPhone and they sounded decent but they never even remotely reached their potential as far as volume level and clarity of sound. I've also taken stuff like the HD 500s from Hi-Fi Man and plugged them in. Those are planar magnetic headphones, also pretty expensive and very heavy. I wouldn't recommend them for prolonged use or gaming. Uh, they have fantastic bass, but you need uh, something that can push a lot of power like the little O2 can. Uh, just plugging them into the back of your sound card on your computer unless you have like a Zonar STX or something from Asus just isn't going to cut it. But guys, I've reviewed a lot of headphones and a lot of headphone amplifiers. And I have to say that the Objective 2 amplifier and DAC from Mayflower Electronics is the best dollar to power ratio uh, for clarity. Like I said, I actually gave away a thousand dollar amplifier because this actually pushed a better signal than the thousand dollar amplifier, which is still to this day hard for me to believe. If I didn't hear it with my own ears, I, I wouldn't believe it because the other amp was gorgeous. It had glass on it. It weighed a massive amount of weight. The power brick alone looked like they just put hundreds of dollars of R&D into designing it. And, it, you know, it's just a, it's a smoke show. You really don't need that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review of my headphones. If you want me to do more reviews of audio stuff, please let me know down in the comments or come over and tweet me. I am at Barnacles. Also, if you have any other questions or anything to add to this review that you would like me to add into the video description, uh, go ahead and leave that also down in the comments or contact me via Twitter or email. All of the links to get in touch with me are in my video description, along with all of the links that you can use to help the channel. Also, if you guys are interested in this t-shirt, I absolutely love this t-shirt. It's the Windows 10 we're watching t-shirt. It's available on shop.barnard.com and all of the sales from that shop actually go to help my channel and help me to grow this business that I somehow got myself into now that is YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And until next time. Shot through the heart and you're too late, baby. You give love a bad name. Don't worry, guys. I'm not going to quit my day job, which is, which, which, which is YouTube. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.